Concentration camps have been turned into memorial sites that can be visited today to learn from the past and understand the scale of the Nazis' crimes. In addition to that, street names, memorial... Bro, y'all y'all gotta hook me up. Once we hit 10k subscribers, bro, I gotta see these places, bro. Like, I'm gonna be emotional when I see these places because, like, I don't, maybe some of y'all have never seen the 9-11 building before. Hey guys, welcome back to Jubos DE, a channel created just to learn about Germany and to actually experience Germany because I actually have a task. Once I hit a uh, 10,000 subscribers, I'll be actually traveling to Germany just to see how Germany really is and uh, experience the German culture for myself, God's willing. But either ways, we're gonna be checking out this video titled, Do Germans Talk About World War II? What do they teach about the Holocaust? And uh, this is coming from Fell from Germany. Shout out to Felly. And um, if you guys are not subscribed, go check out the original video. It's a very good video. I'm so sure of it. And uh, this was recommended by Zapster. If you want to leave recommendations, click the link that I'll provide for you guys in the comment section. It's a playlist here on YouTube. And once you click that link and open the playlist, all you got to do is add whatever videos here on YouTube to the playlist and I'll react to it just for you. But without further ado, guys, let's get right into this video. Do Germans talk about the Holocaust? What do they teach about World War II in school? And is it okay to make a Hitler joke around a German? Hello, servus, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Feli. I'm originally from Munich, Germany, but I've been living here in Cincinnati, Ohio, on and off since 2016. If you think of Germany, especially in a historical context, what comes to your mind? I bet at least 99% of you are thinking of Nazis, World War II, the Third Reich, Hitler, and the Holocaust, and rightly so. Honestly, I'm probably one of the few people who think of Germany as Mercedes, Audi, great country, wow, Germans, oh my gosh. Honestly, I don't actually attach the negative to Germans. I just don't. I, 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 maybe it's because I'm more of a positive guy, but I'd rather, you know, see the positive in, in everyone rather than the negative. Besides, it's not like the whole situation that we're going to discuss right here is really because of Germans, it's because of one guy and one guy can do this to any nation, any country in this world. You know what I mean? A leader can literally uh, poison the entire population of any particular location, country, culture or whatever. So, you know what I mean? It's one of the darkest chapters in history. I know that, you know that. Yet, a lot of people are unsure if this is something they can bring up around me and other Germans. Some people assume that it's a total taboo topic in Germany, something that isn't really discussed in society. But how much of that is actually true? How does Germany deal with its dark past? What is taught about it in school? And is it okay to bring the topic up around Germans? Now, I have answered this question in different contexts before, like in this Q&A video, for example, where I gave a quick two-minute summary. But today, I would like to dive a little deeper. I'd like to talk about You're how this swim. topic has been dealt with publicly in Germany over the last 78 years since the end of World War II. I'd like to share my personal experience of how it was approached in my school and my personal environment. And I'd also like to share how other Germans from different regions and of different generations have experienced this. To do so, I asked my German viewers to fill out a survey about the topic and I received over 230 responses that will give you guys and myself a pretty good idea of how Germans in general think about the curriculums and the overall approach of how we deal with our country's dark past. After the end of the war in Germany in May of 1945, the Allied powers, France, UK, USA, America. and the Soviet Union, divided Germany into four occupation zones and started the process of denazification, demilitarization, decentralization, and democratization, also referred to as the four Ds. To denazify the D. country, the NSDAP, so the Nazi party, and all sub-organizations were banned, and its laws were abolished, and all signs of the Third Reich were erased from everyday life, including books, uniforms, 
names, medals, and street names. Germany also had to make reparation payments to the victorious powers and other affected countries that were mainly paid in machinery, manufacturing plants, and forced labor. Most Germans were also subject to investigations by the International Military Tribunal that was looking to identify the different roles people played in the Holocaust and in committing war crimes. Germans were divided into five categories, from major offender to exonerated individuals. Major offenders were tried in the first Nuremberg trial from November 1945 to October 1946. <laughs> and Yo, I appreciate Feli for this, man. Feli, Feli. Still gonna be a little rough one for me to say the German pronunciation, but Feli, Feli, Feli. Feli, I appreciate this because this is actually a much more detailed video than the previous video that I actually checked out, which was pretty darn detailed. But this is much more detailed and I appreciate this. In 12 subsequent Nuremberg trials that were solely held by the US. All in all, 36 defendants were sentenced to death, 125 received prison sentences, 23 of them for life. Not all of these verdicts were actually executed though. A lot of the convicts ended up being released after just a few years and pardoned from the death penalty as the denied Nazification process became more and more lenient in the Western zones. Due to the extremely high number of cases, less severe offenders were soon handed over to civilian tribunals under German administration, and it became increasingly difficult to find a balance between punishment and rebuilding the country, for which the occupying powers needed to fill a lot of important positions. And having hundreds of thousands of Germans in internment camps didn't exactly make that easy. Now, together with the development of the Cold War, during which West Germany was considered an important ally, the focus quickly started shifting away from strict denazification and more towards rehabilitation. By 1948, countless trials were ceased or never started, and as I said, lots of people were pardoned, which to this day is heavily criticized, as it meant that people that used to be active members of the Nazi party ended up mm, keeping punished. their high-ranking jobs and remained in positions of power in the newly founded West German Republic. In the Soviet occupation zone, denazification was followed through a lot more strictly and quickly. By spring of 1948, they had fired and replaced over 500,000 people. Wow. <laughs> But how did the Germans themselves deal with the war and this dark chapter moving forward? Well, for the first two decades after the war, it pretty much just wasn't talked about at all. The country was full of people who were actively involved in the crimes of the Third Reich, and most common way of dealing with it was silence. Most of them weren't willing to face their own guilt, let alone take responsibility for their actions, and their families often preferred staying in the dark about how badly their own spouses, parents, and grandparents were really involved in it all. Same thing applied to schools. Many of the teachers were formally involved with the Nazis, and the details of the Third Reich were barely part of the curriculum. It wasn't really until the 1960s that young adults in Germany started demanding from their elders to take responsibility for their past and to start an open public dialogue. Some of this was part of the 1968 student movements in West Germany that arose parallel to protests all over the world at the time. The outrage was partly triggered by different events that had taken place throughout the 60s, including the so-called swastika epidemic, the Eichmann trial, the Frankfurt Auschwitz trial, the debate about the imminent statute of limitations of NS crimes, and the election of a former Nazi party member, Kurt Georg Kiesinger, as chancellor. As a result, West Germans finally started owning up to their country's past more intensely in the 70s and 80s. Nazi Germany and the Holocaust became a mandatory part of school curriculums, and TV shows like the American miniseries Holocaust... Okay, 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 okay. That would be nice to, to watch. I would love to actually see what the Holocaust, you know, I would, I would, I would, I would love to experience these, the camps and all of these things. Bro, like, man, I, I, listen, I was never a guy who was fond of history. I've, I've never been that guy. I like tech. I'm a tech guy. I like technology. If I had went to college, I would have been studying how to be a computer engineer, right? That, that's it. I love tech, but history is really interesting and it actually, it's it's not my, you know, what you'd say, oh my gosh, yeah, history, woohoo, yeah, me, right? But the more I get to experience it, it's like the more I'm like, oh, this is actually a very cool thing, you know? 
I like it. That about a third of the population watched on German TV prompted people to reflect on the brutality of the genocide of six million European Jews and the emotional stories of the victims. Other notable productions of the time are the German war film Das Boot, as well as the French documentary Shoah, among others. Today, Germany practices a very active culture of remembrance. It's all about taking responsibility for our country's devastating actions of the past and making sure that something like that can and will never happen again. This includes that it's actually illegal in Germany to deny or downplay the Holocaust. 17 other European countries have similar laws, by the way. It's also illegal to do the Hitler salute or use Nazi insignia, unless it's part of art, science, research or teaching. And the topic is a visible part of public life. Many former concentration camps have been turned into memorial sites that can be visited today to learn from the past and understand the scale of the Nazis' crimes. In addition to that, street names, memorial... Bruh, y'all gotta hook me up. Once we hit 10k subscribers, bro, I gotta see these places, bro. Like, I'm gonna be emotional when I see these places because, like, I don't, maybe some of y'all have never seen the 9-11 building before. Obviously, I'm talking about in America right now, United States, right? You, have, you probably have not been there, but if you go to the location of where 9-11 took place, like, there's a sense of, you know, you feel that energy of, you know, oh my gosh, like so many lives were ended in this exact spot that I'm standing at right here, right? So that I think I'm gonna have that same exact, you know, emotion if I actually get to visit these places one day, God willing, right? So I'm really locked in and I'm really trying to see these places cause you know, it'll be cool. Museums and stumbling stones commemorate the victims Small of stone, the Nazi yeah, yeah. regime all over Germany. The Stumbling Stone or Stolperstein project was started in the 90s by German artist Gunther Demnig and entails brass plates inscribed with the names and life dates of victims that are set into the pavement outside of their last known address or workplace. You'll never know when and where you'll quite literally stumble over one, which shows that deportation took place anywhere and everywhere, and by bending down to read the victims' names, you're pretty much bowing down to them to yes. pay them respect. To That's this right. day, over 75,000 of those stumbling stones have been laid all over Europe, making it the world's largest decentralized memorial. And of course, there are countless movies, documentaries, and books that critically deal with the Third Reich and the post-war era, and that ensure that the victims of the NS regime aren't forgotten. To this day, the historical responsibilities that Germany carries are deeply ingrained in German culture and and politics. Germany has a very unique relationship to Israel, for example, and in the late 50s and early 60s, they signed contracts with Israel, with the Jewish Claims Conference, and 12 European countries regarding compensation to victims of the NS regime, some of which are being paid up to today. You'll also notice that most Germans don't really have a very pronounced sense of patriotism. With the exception of sporting events, like the Soccer World Cup, you won't see a lot of German flags, for example, not even in schools and and other public buildings, unless they're government institutions. There's no such thing as the American Pledge of Allegiance, and the German national anthem is only sung on a small number of occasions. Whether that goes back to an ongoing feeling of guilt and shame, and whether or not that's still called for, is actually a much discussed question among Germans. By the way, you won't find any Nazi statues in Germany. Hitler himself actually banned any kind of memorials of him from the beginning, and other statues were either taken down by the Nazis themselves to repurpose their metal for the war effort, they were destroyed by bombings, or at the latest, taken down by the Allied powers after the war. Wow. I appreciate Feli for actually doing this because it's assisting with my ignorance. It's allowing me to be rather educated, you know, rather than sitting here ignorant. And um, I'm actually happy that I am, uh, you know, capable of actually, you know, listening and, you know, you know, lock in and get all this information gathered. Like I remember when uh, I did a previous video and I found out that Hitler killed himself. I was like, wait, what? Right. And like, I didn't even know that he did that. He banned the statues from even being there. Like, I just like, I, that man, like, it, it, I don't know. Like, I, I don't know, man. I don't know. It's just weird guy. Thank you.
Now, what do German students learn about World War II and the Holocaust in school? Let me start by sharing my own experience. Right As on. you guys know, I'm from Munich, which is in the state of Bavaria, and I went to elementary school and then to a gymnasium there. That's important to note because the school system and the curriculums in Germany actually differ from state to state. Now, I'm 29 years old, so it's been a while, and I don't remember every single detail, but I do know that we started talking about the topic relatively early. I think in fifth or sixth grade, and then we pretty much talked about it all the way until graduation. And it wasn't just in history class, but in a lot of different subjects. It was a very present topic in German class, for example. In sixth grade, we read a book called Damals war es Friedrich, which is about the friendship between a non-Jewish boy and his Jewish neighbor throughout the Third Reich. Then later on, we read books like Die Welle, originally The Wave, which is about a school experiment about the Third Reich. And then we also read Die Schachnovelle by Stefan Zweig, as well as Andorra and Homo Faber by the Swiss author Max Frisch. We also talked about it in religion slash ethics class a lot, because yes, that's a mandatory subject in Bavarian schools. In arts class, we learned about what the Nazis classified as degenerate art and Arte de Kunst, and the topic also came up in the context of arts interpretations. And even in music class, we analyzed the musical and lyrical features of Nazi propaganda songs. And from what I remember, the topic was wow. also touched upon here and there in classes like English, sociology and geology. In history yeah, class, sociology. the main focus on the topic was in ninth grade. I think we spent pretty much the whole year learning about the Weimar Republic, World War II and post-war Germany. And that's also the year where we went to the concentration camp Dachau, which is right outside of Munich. That's something that was mandatory at my school. And I think the same goes for most schools in the area. And then the topic was one of the main focuses again in history class in 11th and 12th grade. Since I grew up in Munich, we also learned a lot about the resistance group of the White Rose, Weiße Rose, since they were located in Munich. I know that Germans in other regions don't learn about them as much, but they were all students at the University of Munich, same university I went to, and they were arrested and killed in their early 20s by the Nazis for distributing leaflets criticizing the Nazi regime. And their names are very present in Munich to this day, especially the siblings Hans and Sophie Scholl, but also Willi Graf, Christoph Probst, Kurt Huber, and Alexander Schmorell. Overall, I feel like there was a lot of focus on the suffering of the Jews and how cruel and inhumane things were. We also learned a lot about Nazi propaganda and about the political, economic, and cultural factors that made World War II and the Holocaust even possible and that led people to believe in such an awful ideology. I don't really remember learning a lot about who Hitler was as a person, and I don't remember talking a lot about the details of the war and warfare. We definitely covered the timeline of the important events of the war, but I don't remember talking about single battles or which weapons and strategies were used, etc. And I'm mentioning this because a lot of Americans here actually know way more about all of that than I do. And I think warfare in general is just a more popular topic in me. Because that's the whole point that I think a lot of people never quite understand. Like, majority of people know about Hitler, but we don't know the details of Hitler regarding the impact on Germany, right? Because it's gonna be taught differently, like for America, for Russians, it's gonna be more like a, yeah, triumph, right? We, we had to handle business, we had to help them out, they needed our backs, you know, we had to go here, we had to do that. It's more of an attack, right? The, 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 the German lessons, in my humble opinion, would be more of a, a surrender and how we um, try to prevent a situation like this from happening again, where we, 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 we decide that we're going to have, you know, like some leader tell us, yo, we're going to take over the entire world or whatever. You get what I'm saying? So I think it's definitely going to be different teachings, obviously. And I definitely don't think um, you're going to learn, uh, you know, based off of a general thing from every country's perspective. I think rather you're going to learn a perspective of the country that you're learning in. You know what I mean? So you're gonna learn from the American's perspective, Russian's perspective, and uh, German's perspective. That's what I think. Y'all can let me know if I'm correct, but that's what I think, because I never knew that Hitler killed himself. Like, I know nothing about the guy. I didn't even knew that he was not even German. I, I never knew that. I found that out in a previous video, right? So stuff like that, um, that's what I mean. So, eh.
Wes. Now there's probably a lot from my school days that I forgot to mention, but I do remember that by like 8th or ninth grade, a lot of us were honestly getting a little tired of the topic and we were sometimes just like, ugh, oh, not again. But of course, looking back, it's definitely better to talk about it too much than not talking about not it enough. enough. And I definitely say that by the time we graduated, we walked out of there with a strong awareness for racism, discrimination, and identifying populist and nationalistic tendencies and propaganda. Now, of course, World War II is something that you'll also be confronted with in real life outside of school. And that can be a very individual experience because depending on your family environment, your friends, the field you work in, you'll be exposed to it in very different ways. In my case, I definitely always felt relatively close to the topic because unlike most other people my age, it's not my great grandparents that lived through the war, but my grandparents. Everyone just had children very late in my family. Wow. So all four of my grandparents lived through the war as teenagers and adults and therefore were affected or even involved in it in different ways. One side of my family- That's actually crazy because um... If you do the math, she's actually so spot on because my grandparent would probably be a kid. I don't even know. I don't even know. Like if you were 70, like 45, 1945, right? Um, that's like what? That's five, that's, that's 55 years. Plus that, I mean, the grandparent would probably be born in that, that time period. Like if you have a grandparent that's really old right now, that grandparent probably was born a little bit after or a little bit before World, World War uh, II, mathematically. I don't know. Family is from Upper Silesia, for example, which was German territory at the time, but now belongs to Poland. So when the Eastern Front got there, they lost their home and became refugees. They were actually part of the winter treks of January of 1945, which was historically cold, and they fled partly by foot and then started from zero after the war, like so many people in Germany. One of my grandfathers was also imprisoned in the GDR for a few years. Now, only one of my grandparents was still alive when I was born, my grandma, but I did hear a lot of first-hand stories from her and of course I heard a lot of stories about my other grandparents from relatives and I read about it in their memoirs. So that's my personal connection to the topic Sheesh. and maybe that's also the reason why I feel extra passionate about fighting discrimination of minorities and why I believe that war is the worst thing humans have ever invented. It is. Now, since I'm not the only one of 84 million people in Germany and as I said earlier, curriculums vary a lot throughout the country. I wanted to make sure that the experiences and opinions of other Germans are included in this video as well. It actually received over 230 submissions to my survey that I sent out, so thank you guys so much to everyone who took the time to fill that out. I will say it was a lot of work to go through it all, and I won't be able to mention every single answer here, but it was fascinating to read, and I'm going to summarize it as best as I can. And I'll also be sharing quotes from the survey with you guys in German because I wanted people to be able to answer this in their native language, but I'll add English subtitles. To give you guys a general overview at first, I did get answers from people of all ages, from 13 to 65, and from all over Germany, and even a couple responses from Austria. And to my question, how well would you say school educated you about World War II, the Holocaust, and the Third Reich? Nobody selected, not at all. About 2% said insufficiently, 14% said basics were covered, but it could have been more, 47% said very well, and about 38% even selected almost too well. The topic was hashed and rehashed over and over again. So I think that shows that most people definitely felt like the topic was taught about very intensely. All other right. questions were open-ended questions, by the way, so I can't tell you the exact percentages, but I'd say the overall consensus was that the topic was taught in a rather objective but also serious and very respectful way while being brutally honest and most people said that it was always age appropriate still and was slowly building up throughout the grades. Karina from Dortmund wrote for example, in der achten Klasse haben wir erst gelernt, was das Dritte Reich war, wer Hitler war, die NSDAP und so weiter. In der neunten dann großer Fokus auf die Judenverfolgung. In der zehnten Klasse dann den Krieg im Detail besprochen, Filme und Dokumentationen geschaut, die teilweise sehr brutal waren, aber einfach nur die Realität abgebildet haben. 
Schuld wurde uns nie eingeredet. Immer nur Verantwortung und das Bewusstsein, dass Faschismus keine Meinung ist, sondern ein Verbrechen. Corbinian from Hessen. Meiner Meinung nach wurde das Thema zwar häufig relativ brutal durch Bilder, Videos, Filmaufnahmen etc., aber dennoch altersgerecht behandelt. Häufig wurde bei Opferzahlen und Holocaustmorden tief ins Detail eingegangen. Dennoch war die Behandlung des Themas meiner Meinung nach genauso angebracht, weil man dadurch überhaupt erst den schieren Schrecken und die unfassbare Unmenschlichkeit begreifen konnte. Es war häufig nicht schön anzusehen, doch genau so haben wir gelernt, was dieser Abschnitt der deutschen Geschichte überhaupt bedeutet. And Alex from Karlsruhe said, es war angemessen, respektvoll den Opfern gegenüber und informativ. In Geschichte haben wir uns kritisch damit auseinandergesetzt und haben uns Fragen gestellt wie Was war die Ideologie der Nazis? Was waren ihre Ziele? Wie konnte es dazu kommen? Es gab auch einen Vortrag von Sally Perel, einem Überlebenden des Holocausts bei uns an der Schule, der für alle ab der achten Klasse verpflichtend war. Eltern durften auch kommen, wenn sie wollten. Er hat uns davon erzählt, was... I love this, I love this. What was the ideology of the Nazis, um, their goals? And how could this happen? I love that. That is very important in my humble opinion to cover. ...ihm passiert ist und wie es ihm damit ging. Am Ende durften wir auch Fragen stellen. Zum Thema Schuldgefühle hat er etwas gesagt, das mir viel geholfen hat. Ihm ist bei seinen Vorträgen aufgefallen, dass junge Menschen oft Schuldgefühle haben, obwohl sie nichts damit zu tun hatten. Das ändert aber nichts. Stattdessen ist es unsere Aufgabe, sicherzustellen, dass es sich nicht wiederholen kann. Es gab später auch noch einen Vortrag von einem Ex-Neonazi bei uns an der Schule. In der 11. haben zwei Geschichtskurse, meiner eingeschlossen, eine Exkursion zu einem Konzentrationslager in Frankreich gemacht. In deutschen Religionen haben wir uns mehr mit der Perspektive der Verfolgten auseinandergesetzt und welche Rolle die Kirche zu der Zeit gespielt hat. Unter anderem durch das Tagebuch der Anne Frank. By the way, most people mentioned that they started talking about the topic sometime between 5 th and 9th grade, but a few even said it was brought up as early as 3rd grade and lining up with my own experience throughout all kinds of subjects. Anni from Northern Westphalia even shared her experience in a video. I think that we talk about in almost every subject. Let's see, a history class for sure. German class, where we would read important literature like Anne Frank. Religion, which is also part of the curriculum in most German schools, where we would not only learn about our religion, but also about others. And then English class, because we also learned about history. French, same thing. French history, where we talked about the Normandy and D-Day and you name it. Silke from Oldenburg said about this. Im Geschichtsunterricht wurde recht ausführlich über das, wie konnte sowas nur passieren, gesprochen. Der verlorene Krieg, Wirtschaftskrise, vorhandener latenter Antisemitismus. Im Kunstunterricht ging es um die Idealbilder, die sich in Bildern, Statuen und Architektur wiederfinden und um das, was entartete Kunst genannt wurde. In Deutsch und Englisch passende Lektüren. One person said that they watched The Boy in the Striped Pajamas in English class, for example. And in German class, people mentioned reading the books I mentioned earlier, but also books like The Diary of Anne Frank, Als Hitler das rosa Kaninchen stahl, or Die Blechtrommel, and movies such as Schindler's List. A few people also mentioned analyzing Hitler's rhetoric, as well as his speech and writing style, to better understand his propaganda techniques. Hitler's own book, Mein Kampf, however, was only mentioned by one person in the whole survey, which probably probably has to do with the fact that up until 2016, it wasn't actually allowed to be printed in Germany due to copyright issues. So if the book was discussed in school, it was usually just in the form of extracts. In addition to learning about personal destinies from books and movies, a lot of people also mentioned visiting concentration camps. I was actually a little surprised by how many people mentioned that, especially since not every school is close to a former concentration camp. So for many, this included an overnight trip. Some people even traveled to Poland to visit Auschwitz. Charlotte from Niedersachsen said, Der Besuch des KZs in Bergen-Belsen ist bei uns Standard in der 9. oder 10. Klasse, was ich wichtig fand, weil man die Dimensionen viel stärker nachempfinden kann. Zusätzlich war ein Teil unserer Klasse in Krakau-Auschwitz, was ein bis heute einprägendes Ereignis war. Von dem Lager ist ja verhältnismäßig viel erhalten und die Bilder sind mir im Kopf geblieben. Danach wurde uns auch der Raum gegeben, über unsere Eindrücke zu reden, in einer Runde mit der mitreisenden Lehrkraft. Ich würde behaupten, dass jeder Deutsche einmal dort oder in einem vergleichbar gut erhaltenen KZ gewesen sein sollte. Carina wrote, 
Vor allem der Besuch mit Übernachtung im KZ. That, that right there is a big fact. Like visiting that where something actually took place is definitely a lot more of a feeling. Uh, you know, like you you feel it. Like it's it's not a situation where you're like, oh, okay, cool, that's what happened. All right, cool, whatever. It's more like, dang, so this really, really, really happened. You know what I mean? Like visiting a crime scene is not the same as hearing about the crime. Buchenwald war eine Erfahrung, die mir bis heute, 14 Jahre später, noch sehr stark im Gedächtnis geblieben ist. Was mir retrospektiv positiv in Erinnerung geblieben ist, ist, dass nicht beschönigt wurde. Man hat uns immer die brutale Wahrheit darüber gesagt, was die Nazis den Menschen angetan haben. Egal wie grausam. In addition to that, a lot of people mentioned visiting museums, memorials, synagogues, Jewish cemeteries and things like the Reichsparteitagsgelände in Nürnberg or the home of Klaus von Stauffenberg even. A lot of schools also organized a trip to Berlin, which is actually something we did too in 10th grade, and that certainly included visiting the memorial to the murdered Jews of Europe, among other things. And a lot of people also said that they had historical witnesses talk at their schools, like we heard in one of the quotes earlier, which I think is one of the most valuable experiences you could have, especially since today most of them aren't around anymore. One thing that I could definitely tell from the survey was how heavily people's experiences were dependent on the teachers they had. I think that's always the case in school, of course, but I think specifically with this topic, not everyone had a good experience. Sabine wrote, for example, Meine Lehrer waren von der Nachkriegsgeneration, die das Schweigen gebrochen haben. Allerdings haben sie das Thema überkompensiert. Uns wurden sehr stark Schuldgefühle vermittelt. Ab der dritten Klasse haben wir Bücher über das Thema gelesen. Because. Die waren natürlich noch nicht so brutal, aber später wurden wir nicht geschont. Wir haben grausamste Bilder ansehen müssen und waren auch in Auschwitz oder in Israel, wo wir unter anderem mit Opfern des Holocaust geredet haben. Insgesamt hat mich die Art und Weise, wie uns der Holocaust in der Schule beigebracht wurde, ziemlich traumatisiert. Ich bin später ins Ausland gegangen und habe dort erst nach Jahren ein relativ normales Verhältnis zu meiner Nationalität entwickeln können. Heute habe ich keine Schuldgefühle mehr. Allerdings tragen wir Deutsche eine Verantwortung, dass dieses Thema nicht vergessen wird. And a person from Mainz shared another pretty negative experience. Responding to the question in what manner it was taught, they said, sehr detailliert, fast schon schwärmerisch, für die Ausländer in der Klasse sehr beleidigend, hatten eine ziemlich braune alte Dame als Lehrerin in Geschichte. Es wurde definitiv zu oft von den guten alten Zeiten gesprochen. Ich fand es schrecklich, dass sie eine Lehrkraft zugelassen haben, die schon fast verherrlichend über so ein schreckliches Thema gesprochen wow. hat und einem jeden, der eine negative... I only imagine, like, like, look at the history in America, like, you know, the history in America is not... It's, it's, I don't remember what that word is, like when you're killing your own, right? Like it, it even makes me, you know, like really messed up right now. But think about the way how the history in America is compared to the German history. Like what she just said, like, you know, it, it made it, she could not actually accept her nationality. That's practically what she's saying. But look at America, dog, like with America, black people are equally as important as white people in America, right? If it wasn't for the black people, if it wasn't for the white people, whichever way, how you want to do it, if blacks were the slave masters, white were the slaves, it don't make a difference. Both of them were needed in order to build such a great country, right? But it's neglected. It's not even accepted. Like you can go to a lot of people right now and they're like, oh, it's all the black, it's the white, and it's so separated and segregated. And it's like, nobody actually realized that, bro, we have a messed up past that we gotta adjust. Like it's literally killing the country's future. Like it has to be adjusted, right? And it's, it's, it's just honestly sad that this is, um, you know, something that just never actually gets discussed. Like, It's just not like the way how these people talk about, you know, what they learned in school about their things. Like if you don't feel sick, if you don't feel like, you know, your people did bad or this shouldn't have happened, then <laughs> straight up, you ain't learned nothing. You ain't understand it because I'm telling you, slavery ain't, it, it, in America, it was nothing nice, man. For crying out loud, slavery was abolished, and but people were still being held as, as slave. Think about that. Just just think about that, right? So it's it's tough. It 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 it's a it's a tough video for me because I'm looking at something very similar to this because Germans didn't do this to Germans. They did this to Jews, right? They were trying to gain control, whatever, so on and so forth. 
right? But America, Americans fought against each other. Slavery was there, but I mean, if we had slavery and we moved on from it and we talk about it and we were like, bro, like without y'all, this wouldn't have been possible. This wasn't right. This wasn't right. We got to make it a better place. We got to do something. None of that happens. And it's actually really messed up. Die Einstellung dazu vertrat, eine schlechte Note reingedrückt hat. I do want to say that this experience was definitely an exception, but I wanted to include it to show a few different aspects here. Other people were very lucky with their teachers though, like Lara from Duisburg. Ich fand, dass alle Lehrer es sehr gut angegangen haben, den richtigen Ton gewählt haben und uns auch bei schlimmen Bildern oder Videos vorgewarnt haben. Wer zwischendurch mal kurz raus wollte, durfte es auch. And there were also a few people that still experienced the time when the topic wasn't talked about a lot in school, like Katrin from Northern Westphalia. In meinem Alter, zweite Generation nach dem Krieg, war es nicht sehr detailliert und wurde eher überflogen. Das eigentliche Wissen kam nicht aus der Schule, sondern mit dem Älterwerden aus Dokus. Bei uns als Schülern kam es so rüber wie, okay, wir können das Thema nicht aussparen, aber wir machen es so kurz und oberflächlich wie möglich. Ich glaube, erst jetzt, wo wesentlich mehr Zeit vergangen ist, traut man sich und ist nicht mehr ganz so beklemmt. One question that I personally found extremely interesting and that might even be useful for any teachers out there is which topics were covered repeatedly and which ones people felt like weren't covered enough. The vast majority of these over 230 people that answered the survey agreed that the main focus was clearly on the Holocaust, so the persecution of Jewish people, while the persecution of other minorities like Sinti and Romani, homosexuals, political opponents, people of color, and the youth and of disabled people, etc., were barely covered. Other aspects that people said weren't covered enough included World War II outside of Germany, including the Pacific War, but even the actions of Germany's allies or the German invasion in Greece or Yugoslavia. Those are all things that I personally agree with too. I don't remember any of those things being part of the curriculum. And a lot of people also said they would have liked to learn more about post-war Germany and the denazification process, also about the history of anti Semitism and that it wasn't something that the Nazis just came up with themselves mm -hmm. about German refugees. And I also saw quite a lot of people sharing my experience that they didn't learn a lot about the details of the war in terms of tactics, different battles, etc., and about Hitler as a person. I think no one is born evil, and I cannot recall that we talked about what had happened to him, why he became that kind of person. So yeah, I think this would have been also important to understand. One thing that was very interesting was that about half of the people said that they really focused on how the Nazis seized power and how the weaknesses of the Weimar Republic led to that, which is what I mentioned too, that that was focused on a lot in my school. But then the other half listed this under things that weren't covered enough. And many also said it should have been talked about more how we can recognize warning signs and parallels of similar developments in society today. And last but not least, this This was a common point of criticism as well. Ich bereue auch, dass ich so wenig über andere geschichtliche Themen gelernt habe. Der Holocaust und der Zweite Weltkrieg hat alles überschattet. Which I would generally agree with, we really didn't get to cover a whole lot of other topics of recent history, but at the same time, I also think that it was important that we covered the topic so intensely, like Markus from Hildesheim says too. In der Schule hatte ich immer das Gefühl, dieses Thema wäre überrepräsentiert. Wenn ich jetzt mitbekomme, wie schlecht einige darüber informiert sind und wie diskriminierendes, rassistisches und rechtsradikales Gedankengut in und mm. rund um Deutschland wieder aufkommt, wünsche ich mir, dass all diejenigen sich nochmal gründlich damit beschäftigen, beschäftigen und damit dafür sorgen, nichts aus dieser furchtbaren Zeit auch nur ansatzweise zu wiederholen. Britta from Berlin says, bei mir kam die Message, dass das auf keinen Fall noch mal passieren darf und wäre den Anfängen definitiv rüber. Ich hatte auch noch viele 68er Lehrer, deren Lebenswerk es quasi war, das Schweigen zu brechen. Ich hoffe, dass die jüngere Lehrergeneration das Erbe weiterführt. And even Laura, who became a history teacher, said this. Natürlich habe ich zwischendurch, wie wohl fast jeder deutsche Schülerin, das Gefühl gehabt, dass es zu viel thematisiert wird. Im Nachhinein finde ich es aber gut. Es hilft heute sehr dabei, rechte Parolen, wie Gaulands Aussage, der Nationalsozialismus sei Vogelschiss gewesen, einordnen zu können. In terms of how present the topic is outside of school in Germany today, people shared a lot of different opinions and experiences, and I won't be able to include all of them in this video, but many mentioned, for example, that 
some German TV channels pretty much show Nazi documentaries 24-7, which is definitely true. And I know that that can be pretty surprising for people visiting Germany. Some people said that the current political developments all around the world worry them and that they feel like German politicians should be more actively fighting that. Some mentioned how this whole topic of inherited guilt, Erbschuld, is still weighing on us as a country. But most people said that they think that Germany is doing a rather good job dealing with this topic, even though it's not perfect, and that it's important wow. that the German government commemorates the victims of the NS regime on days like the International Holocaust Remembrance Day or on German Volks Trauertag and other memorial days. And some people also shared how difficult it can still be within their own families. I'm just going to read one quote from a young German that represents that pretty well. This is from Vivi, 18, from Lüneburg. In der Gesellschaft ist das ganz unterschiedlich. Es gibt halt so zwei Lager. Die einen finden es nicht genug, ich ebenfalls, und die anderen zu viel, darunter auch vier Jugendliche. Gut finde ich den Umgang in den öffentlich-rechtlichen Medien. Gerade zum Beispiel Kika hatte eine gute Kampagne, um es den Kindern näher zu bringen. Der Krieg und ich heißt das, glaube ich. In meiner Familie wurde viel totgeschwiegen. Gerade was die Leute so gemacht haben. Alle meine Urgroßväter waren im Krieg und teilweise Jahre danach in Gefangenschaft. Wer weiß, was für Gräueltaten sie damals begangen haben. Jedoch arbeiten meine Mutter und ich viel auf an Kriegstraumata und Fluchtgeschichte. Meine Großeltern kamen als Kinder aus Ostpreußen. Jedoch sind einige in der Familie immer noch der Meinung, dass darüber nicht gesprochen werden soll. Einige haben ihre Schuld und Geheimnisse bereits mit ins Grab genommen. Last but not least, is it okay to ask a German about World War II, the Holocaust and Nazis, or is that offensive coming from a foreigner? Now, I didn't include this in my survey, but based on my experience, I can say, Yes, you can absolutely talk to us Germans about World War II. I even feel like a lot of Germans appreciate talking about it with outsiders from another country, especially when they find that they're educated on the topic. That would be interesting if you, um, you know, didn't discuss it and took it to the grave. Like, I've that that's how I viewed some things at uh, sometimes. But um, the thing is, uh, humanity, we're all similar people, right? Um, we have thoughts and you might never discuss something and the the truth is you're thinking okay if i don't discuss it it's just gonna die and nobody's gonna ever resurrect it but the un unfortunate truth is that a lot of us you don't get the fact that bro a lot of these things actually come back because of the fact that we don't talk about it which is really 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 unfortunate is it okay to ask a German about World War II, the Holocaust and Nazis, or is that offensive coming from a foreigner? Now, I didn't include this in my survey, but based on my experience, I can say Yes, you can absolutely talk to us Germans about World War II. I even feel like a lot of Germans appreciate talking about it with outsiders from another country, especially when they find that they're educated on the topic. However, it's definitely important to us to stay respectful. I found that Germans can be a little more sensitive to jokes about the whole topic, for example, and not every German is gonna be in the mood to talk about it, especially if people are still in school or just graduated and might be a little tired of the topic. But generally, this is something that we are very open about in Germany and most of us will not feel personally offended just because you bring up our dark past. Let me know if you guys agree with me on that or not in the comments, but I recently came across this video by Radical Living. Hey Hans, I was wondering since you're German and all, do Germans still feel like guilty about World War II? How do you feel about um, um, are you Are you hungry? Uh, I, you look hungry. I'm gonna make us some sandwiches, okay? See you right back. I mean, your grandfather must have fought in the war, right? You ever talk to him about how it was being on And then he just ends up making up more and more excuses and ends up driving away because he really wants to avoid talking about the topic. And even in general, it's a lot. Again, thank you to everyone who took the time to fill out the this, this was a crazy video. That's all I got. It was a crazy video, but it was a great video. I really actually appreciate it and enjoyed it. Thank you, uh, Feli from Germany. Uh, rocks with her, man. Like, this is, this is beautiful. Like, going out there, giving the history of your country, talking about these sensitive topics is a very good thing. And, um, you know, educating people like myself, you know, who are actually, you know, humble enough to engage in these topics that they know not much about, right? So, 
Appreciate that. Uh, go show some love to Feli. If you haven't actually watched this video, it'll be a shocker. But um, if you haven't, go check it out. Link will be in the description of my video for her video. Like I said before, if you want to recommend any video, click the link that I'll provide for you guys in the comment section. Once you click that link, I will react to that video just for you guys. And um, yeah, that's going to be the end of the video, guys. Thank you for watching. I'm out of here. Peace.